Welcome back, YouTubers, to the Near Mint Condition. This is Omar, and today I'm going to show you my final haul for 2018. So let's kick it off. Okay, let's kick it off with some trade paperbacks. This is Nightwing Volume 8, the final Chuck Dixon Nightwing collected in trade paperback form. And if you saw my overview of Nightwing, then you've already seen what's in there. This is Mutant X. This is Howard Mackey and Tom Rainey's baby. Um, this is I right after X Factor 149. There was supposed to be a 150 because Howard Mackey was writing that series. And I don't think anybody bothered to tell him that, hey, we're going to revamp the story. We're going to cancel X Factor and we're going to start this new series called Mutant X. It's all the story about how Havoc, uh, Alex Summers, Scott Summers, Cyclops' brother, goes into another dimension and he meets another form of x-men right like it's he sees people like madeline Pryor, the goblin queen and it's just the same kind of story that we've been told but i really enjoy that this is where bloodstorm comes from i know lately she's been in that x-men blue series which was not that good and this particular book collects issues 1 through 17 and annual 1999 because they didn't have numbering systems back then they just had years this is the first half i believe there's a second trade paperback that has already been solicited so we'll be getting a total of two speaking of total this is the final volume of the gambit series which is all written by fabian yasiesa this here collects issues 13 through 25 in annual number two um, what I found interesting about this series and the way that it's been collected or it's going to be collected is that it wraps up with issue 24. That's fun, uh, Fabian Nicias' final issue. However, issue 25 introduces us to a new storyline and a new creative team. Uh, Scott Lobdell is now writing it. And then, um, what is his name? George's, George Genty. George's Genty is the artist. He went on to do Buffy and Weapon X. Looks like that. But it kicks off this new storyline that kind of ends here and it continues into that Bishop and Gambit series. As a matter of fact, it says, to follow Gambit's adventures, pick up Gambit and Bishop Alpha. So there was a Gambit and Bishop Alpha, Gambit and Bishop Omega, and then a six issue miniseries. So I don't know how that's going to be collected because that's also not collected in the Eve of Destruction or Omnibus that is coming out next year so i'm curious how that all that is going to be collected and here we have x factor volume well i guess this is six or seven seven haha -ha. so this collects x factor 71 through 83 and annual seven and then the crossover with incredible hulk 390 391 this is all done by peter david this is peter david's first take on x factor there's the hulk stuff and drawn by del keon one of my favorite artists who was kind of mimicking john byrne at the time you can kind of tell here. And also the art on X Factor is by the most wonderfully over underrated, sorry, Larry Ham uh, Larry Stroman. I almost said Larry Hama. Oh, then I forgot the annual here. This is annual number seven, I think, drawn by Joe Quesada, who eventually took over the book. And eventually, like in the middle of a story, Peter David kind of walked out. So there should be another volume of this collecting more of Peter David's stuff. Because, yeah, he walked out, like, right before Fatal Attractions. And Scott Lobdell took its place, and it was just not that good after that. But, oh, God, I forgot. This is Mark Pacella. This guy's artwork. He was a huge Jim Lee ripoff rip artist. But Then we have The Incredible Hulk Epic, Volume 3. This one's also called The Leader Lives. Collecting the final issues of Tales to Astonish, 97-101. And then Incredible Hulk, when the title from Tales of Astonish changes to Incredible Hulk, 102 to 117. It also collects Annual Number 1 and Not Brand Ech Number 9. I never know how to pronounce that damn word. One of my favorite books I picked up during that damage sale at In Stock Trades was Inside Mobius, Part 3. I need to get Part 1, I keep forgetting that. And as a huge fan of Mobius, this was a must for me. So I hope that Dark Horse keeps releasing these books. All we have right now is like The Art of Edena, Edena, and then Inside Mobius 1 through 3. And I think there's a fourth volume of this coming out. I'm hoping one day we get Blueberry and other works that he's done. I know that Humanoid owns a lot of his stuff. So at least we get those books in English. But Dark Horse, come on, you need to step your game up. This is Mobius we're talking about. We should have a lot more books in our library than this if you saw my christmas haul then you saw that i got more cinder for christmas so the gentleman that did eternat the eternat did this so i'm very excited to read this 
First up, we've got Justice League. I believe this is the final Brian Hitch issue. So let's look through here. This is what the inside looks like. This is kind of a thin book, honestly. This collects Brian Hitch's final issues and Justice League 26 through 33. I think there's a volume four already solicited. I don't know if they're gonna go with that spine here, the rebirth spines, or if they're gonna go with the new blue spines. Those I haven't seen any pictures of. Tyler Kirkman's on art. I believe Tony Daniel did some of it, but it wraps up that future storyline that Brian Hitch started. And here's all the goodies in the back, the extra covers. Nick Bradshaw, why don't they get that guy to draw a monthly series? I know he's kind of slow, but God, I love his Arthur Adams style. All right, let's keep going through here. Didn't realize I had five books to go through. Okay, here is Superman Rebirth. I'm sorry, Action Comics Rebirth. Superman still. Volume three. Hey, booster. Like that. There's the back. And this collects Action Comics 985 to 999. So the final Dan Jurgen stuff before that Action Comics 1000 issue. And yeah, this guy kind of looks like Greg Capullo's artwork, but it's not him. And it also collects Action Comics Special Number One. This is a huge book. I love this stuff. It has that crossover, I believe, with The Flash, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the crossovers are done really weird in here. Like, whenever the crossover event comes out, it's not in oversized format hardcover. But for some reason, the actual Rebirth books are in oversized hardcover. Now, that was Brett Booth, Will Conrad. It's got all kinds of talent on this. Um, having read half of this, I'm going to say I'm going to miss... Hey, it's Scott Collins. I haven't read that yet. Um, I'm going to miss Dan Jurgens. wrong. This is Suicide Squad number three. Speaking of books I'm not digging, I just get this for the art because of that Wales Portacio. Um, this collects Suicide Squad 21 through 32. It's, uh, it's about the same size as the other ones. The other ones held about 10 issues, 11 issues. It's about the same. I have not read any of this. I'll be honest, I haven't read of any volume two, so I need to catch up because I was hating on the first volume. Even with Jim Lee and Tony Daniels on art. Or was it John Romita Jr., I'm sorry, after that. But regardless, it was just not that good of a story. So I'm really hating on Rob Williams' Suicide Squad. I don't know if it got better, though. So Volume 2 could have gotten better. Here's some Wills Portacio variant covers. And let's move on to the next book. Uh, a bo another book I'm going to miss. This is Peter Tomasi's Superman Run. Oh, there's a character I'm going to miss. I'm not going to spoil anything of what Bendis, but Bendis changed some things up in the lineup. So this collects, sadly, Superman 27 through 36. Some of the final issues by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. And now they went on to do Super Sons, and they're still working on that. I think a new series, 12 issues of that. So. More artwork by Tyler Kirkman and Doug Mankey. Love this guy's artwork. It's this huge fight in the end here. And then Bendis. So, hey. Then we've got Batman Volume 3. Let's look in here and see what it contains really quick. Let's look at the inside cover. Oh. Okay, that's Kill Jan and him. And Joelle Jones are the primary artists on this with Clayman and then Lee Weeks. So this collects Batman issues 33 through 44. Annual number two, which is the one issue that this actually is annual number two and i'm going to skip it so it doesn't get ruined for people i got kind of emotional reading that it's beautiful i love the ending and this leads up to issue 50 which is the big controversial wedding did he or did he not now joelle jones is a wonderful wonderful artist she is currently working on the catwoman series and then of course if you saw my nightwing overviews again you heard me praise mikhail Jannon. And how pretty and super sexy he makes everybody look. Look at that. Gorgeous artwork. I really didn't dig the beginning of Tom King's run. And then I really got into it with I Am Suicide. Absolutely love that. I Am Bane. And this actually was really, really good. Volume 3. So, I don't know. His his run kind of reminds me of Grant Morrison's run on New X-Men. They're kind of ups and downs like roller coaster. Well, I guess Grant Morrison's run on Justice League as well. And here we have Vault of Horror, the final Vault of Horror volume. Collecting the final five issues of Vault of Horror, 36 through 40. Before the Comics Code, before Seduction of the Innocent. Now, a lot of people have problems with these EC 
archives because they are colored with these modernized colors. I myself didn't really have a problem. I, it kind of grew on me because um, it was either that or the black and white archives, and I prefer these colors over those. I know some people argue over the whether the black and white is superior uh, because I don't think, I, at least I can't afford any of the original ones with the original color, so this is as good as it gets for me. So I'm really excited that they finished this up. They finished this up, Tales from the Crypt and The Haunt of Fear. So that leaves me with shock and suspense stories. And I might get into the other EC stuff. So if you're in, into the EC books, yeah, please tell me what to get. Should I get the crime and suspense stories? The weird fantasy? I've heard all these wonderful things about these books. I'd love to know what everybody else is getting from this series. And I picked up all six volumes of Mind MGMT. I guess Mind Management by Matt Kent. Uh, this is a book that gets talked about an awful lot. I haven't read any of these. I picked these up used on the Facebook group, the Omnibuds Cafe. So it's a Facebook group where people swap used or new books if they're not really digging or they sell them. So I picked this up pretty cheap. And so it's a good group if you want to check that out. It's on a Facebook group. I don't know about Matt Kent's artwork. I'm... I was flipping through here and I'm getting that Jeff Lemire kind of artwork feeling and I'm not a big fan of Jeff Lemire's artwork. While I love his stories, his art just kind of turns me off. So, um, But I'm willing to give this a chance, just like I've read all of Jeff Lemire's stuff. So I'm going to put that aside because I haven't read a single issue. And I finally went ahead and bought this because it was 60% off at In Stock Trades. And this is The End League by Rick Remender and Matt Broom. And Matt Broom, I remember from his run on... Stormwatch when he was over at Image. He was one of those, I believe he was a top cow guy. Uh, let's just flip through here. I'm not sure why I never read this or I never picked it up, but I guess I'm glad it never went out of print because it's a Dark Horse Rick Remender hardcover book and I got it for 60% off or 65% off because it was during one of those weekend sales at In Stock Trades. So glad I waited and Rick Remender, no idea what it's about. So, I will check that out later. I got so much reading to catch up on. Speaking of Rick Remender and big hardcover books, here is one by him and Eric Wynn, not Dustin Wynn, and Matthew Wilson. This is gigantic. And another one of those blind buys. No idea what the hell I bought. All I know is that it's Rick Remender, oversized artwork, a giant robot, and some pretty kick-ass artwork. I did see some of the pictures online before I bought it to see if I dig his art and yeah I'm sold no idea what the story's about but this was cheap enough it was a dark horse it was at sell on sale at in stock trades for 50% off and it's got a retail price of 25 bucks I only paid 12.50 for it so of course yes I gotta get it here is another image book this is the wicked and divine volume three gods living amongst us demons uh, really beautiful artwork. This is the same team that brought us Young Avengers. Not the original Young Avengers run, but the follow-up. And that one's collecting in an omnibus format. Uh, don't want to flip too much through here because I have not read this volume. I've read volume 1 and 2, and I really dig it. Sometimes it can be a little dialogue heavy, but hell, I don't mind that. I kind of miss that in some comic books sometimes. And here we have Silver Surfer by Dan Slott and Mike Alred. One of these books I can't believe I never read it's gorgeous and i absolutely love the story so much so i got a little teary-eyed at the end of it if you enjoy doctor who let's look at the inside i think it's just the same yeah if you enjoy doctor who or hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy this is the book for you i will be doing more of a bigger overview of that on omnibros where we're all going to review it if you saw my fantastic four Comprehensive reading order. I've already talked and praised about how this is my favorite Fantastic Four run. So check that out if you don't mind. I am working on a part two that will be coming out sometime this week. I promise. I picked up Baby Teeth, Volume 1. All because my friend Jess Bragg, the Omni Dog, suggested it to me. This is by Aftershock Comics. And it is year one. It is Donny Cates and Gary Brown. It collects issues 1 through 10. I have no idea what this is about. But everything that I've read that Donny Cates has done, I've fallen in love with. So I can't wait to check this out. It's a horror story, so I know that much. I did talk about Jeff Lemire a little bit earlier. 
here is his Black Hammer Library Edition Volume 1, Dark Horse. This is one of those, yeah, let's look through here. This is one of those books that was also sold out for a little while until Dark Horse decided to bring it back into print. Like it sold out for a week or two, they were out of it at the warehouse and then they shipped out more books. So I think it's back in stock. And yeah, that you had me at Jeff Lemire. I have enjoyed everything that man has done. While I feel I don't like his artwork, I love most of his stories. Except for that X-Men run that he had, the Extraordinary X-Men, which I don't think any there was any saving grace for the X-Men at that time. And the art here is done by Dean Ormston, who I've never heard of. Um, now, I have read a f about four or five issues of this so far, and I'm really digging it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what I'm currently reading for Old Reader, New Reader, The Crisis on Infinite Earths, because of the whole multiverse thing. Now, Battle Angel Alita was not the only manga I picked up. Catching up on my One Piece, volume 85. Got this on the half off because of the nick and dents or the damage cells at in stock trades. And I don't really see anything bad with it. I think maybe it's got this little mark right there. I don't know if you can, yeah, there you go. Eh, you know, 50% off, worth it. Speaking of Battle Angel Alita, I did do an overview of that if you want to check that out when I unbox this for the first time. This beautiful box set. Okay. Beautiful to me. It's not as great as the Akira box set, but you know, check out that video if you want. I got volume one of the Disney Masters for Christmas, from, and I put that on my Christmas haul video, but of course, I even said in my Christmas haul video, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to buy a box set too. So again, really quick, these are collected in three different ways. You can get the individual issues, or I'm, I'm sorry, the individual volumes, or you can buy them in box sets that pertain to the character. So there's a box set for Mickey only stories, and then there's a box set for duck only stories. Or you can get them in box sets like this, which contain both of them, the duck and the Mickey stories. But that's the way I decided to do it because I'm a freaking completist. Even though all I really care about is the duck stories, I'm willing to give the Mickey stories a shot. Having never read any of this stuff because all of this stuff is European and has never been printed in English. So I'm excited to read this stuff because IDW, unfortunately, let's look at the Donald Duck book canceled their timeless tell hardcover line which sucks because they uncle scrooge and donald duck made it all the way to volume three so i'm glad at least fanographics is giving us the hardcover treatment now i compared the size of these during my christmas haul videos to the carl barks and the don rosa books so they're a little smaller than the don rosa books and but they're also a little bit bigger than the carl barks fanographics books so they're kind of somewhere in between I hope they collect covers. I don't know how these were collected in Europe, so that's one of my favorite things about these books are the covers too. And then the yeah, these the afterwards here. And the stories within the stories. So I will be diving into those. And finally, I got X-Men Grand Design Volume 2. More of the retelling. I haven't even opened this book yet. More of a retelling of the X-Men comics in chronological order. All done in a really, really cool, unique way. And, oh, cool, they got the original art in there. So this volume gets us all the way, I think, to about issue 150. Oh, I love the way those panels are drawn, the white on those. We go through all the Giant Size X-Men 1, all the way through the Dark Phoenix Saga. Oh, my God. All done in chronological order and showing the events of what was happening everywhere else oh maybe it, no it goes maybe it takes us all the way to issue 200 because this is where rogue joins the team and wolverine the marriage of wolverine and madeline Pryor. so maybe yeah maybe it does get us there's life death hey i haven't flipped through here oh wait this okay so it gets us to issue 188 it's life death huh interesting and then a reprinting of Giant Size X-Men 1. I don't know why they need to do that, but hey, whatever. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoy these. If you're, I only suggest these books to people that love X-Men and kind of know uh, a little bit about the knowledge. Because if you're learning X-Men from these books, you're going to be completely lost. Because there's just so much, and so much of it is boring unless you have already know a little bit about the stories. And even me, who kind of fancies myself as an x-men knowledge base i forget about some of these things that have happened 
because I forgot how much people have retconned some of these stories, but I really like what he's done here. And really quick, before I go, a shout out to my co-host Tina. She gave me this awesome throw. It's a plush throw of guts from Berserk. That's badass. Thank you, Tina. And this awesome new Nightwing DC collectible from my co-host, Matty. Let's get this open, see what he looks like. It's an interesting Nightwing. Let's get him out of here. Honestly, he is a pretty cool looking figure now that I got him out of there. So thank you, Matty. Put him up on my Nightwing shelf. And that was everything I picked up in December of 2018. I'm really excited about the new year. I'd love to know what you guys ended up getting in December of 2018 and what you're looking forward to in 2019. Thank you very much for watching again. This was Omar. Don't forget to check out our weekly show that comes out every Thursday, especially this Thursday because this is our season two finale. But just the panel show will take a break for about a month or so before we come back with our season three. The hauls and the reviews and overviews and old reader, new reader will continue. And speaking of old reader, new reader, we kicked that back off at the beginning of the year on Tuesday, January 1st at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about Crisis on Infinite Earths. Very excited to talk about that. So hope you can join us for a live broadcast of that. Again, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.